Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to Luther's Question Time Live. This is episode number 110. This is a show where I answer your questions about guitars, guitar building, life, business, personality problems. I don't know. You name it. Ask me and I will... S I'm sure I'll come up with something to say. It has been... Uh, it has been one week since there was a, a live stream and uh, some of you were not expecting this one to occur. Uh, by dint of the fact that this weekend, today's Monday, uh, Saturday and Sunday this week, I was at the uh, Birmingham Guitar Show. We in fact had three separate stands, and uh, it's it's insane. It was absolutely absolutely incredible. Uh, it was the most successful show we have ever done. Uh, it was the most interesting show we have ever done. It was just absolutely awesome. So uh, for those of you that uh, were there, and there are actually some in the chat already, uh, thank you very much for coming along. It was great to see you again. And uh, yeah, for those of you that were not, I'm sorry for your loss. It was a, it was a fantastic weekend with lots of stuff. I, uh, I did not buy a single guitar, not even, not for the museum, uh, although uh, Dave Simpson came along and he returned at this show last year I lent him my bog oak and gold leaf guitar and uh, this year he returned it and uh, he returned it with interest he uh, donated one of his uh, one of his vintage guitars to the museum so uh, uh, pick that up and uh, but f as far as buying guitars goes, I did not buy a single guitar for the giveaway, for the museum, none of that, which really surprised me and everyone around me. So much so that uh, at the end of the show, I came back to the stand and uh, uh, Tom, who is the person who says, oh, don't spend too much money today, he had gone out to the car park and bought a Gretsch and uh, a Gibson Les Paul and th three other guitars. I can't even remember what they were now. For shame, for shame, I tell you. Um, other than that, I picked up a few incredible pedals, like genuinely, uh, supremely uh, excited about that. So uh, yes, I've got uh, some Redbeard stuff that uh, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Redbeard effects and uh, uh, another two companies. Uh, hold on, here we go. There's uh, some of these here. Ritual Devices. <laughs> it's one of the best company names. I'm not sure if I. Oh, it's, it's all it's all it's all properly packed away, so I'm not I'm not going to do that. We don't have time, but uh, yeah, there's going to be some pedal-based stuff on the giveaway soon. Uh, check out Ritual Devices if you have not yet um, come across them. Uh, I have never been tempted by a tremolo pedal in my life, literally never. And uh, the Ritual Devices, it's sort of a tremolo slash chorus slash. Um, it's got this whole different vibe. It's absolutely incredible. I fell in love with it and, and had to have it. Uh, what other news? Eleven magazine. Uh, if you do not follow uh, Eleanor Jane on Instagram yet, you should. Genuinely. Uh, genuinely. Check her out. There's a question there for me from S.M. Myers. I'll have a look at that. Uh, Burst and Gold Tops calendar. This is just, in she's an incredible photographer who loves photographing uh, <laughs> sexy guitars. And uh, she's come out with an absolutely incredible, beautifully put together. Any magazine that has a close up such as this of two frets on a fretboard across a double spread. That is, it's a magazine that uh, you need to own. So seriously, that was the first person I spoke to at the show uh, on the f on the Saturday morning. Sorry, and uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, Richard Garnish says that Dave Simpson is a good egg. He really is. He really is. Dave. Dave. Um, 
<laughs> Dave is the first one to say that he's not a particularly fashionable uh, sort of person. People shouted at him about his hair on a semi-regular basis. And uh, for example, and he always just says, you know, yeah, screw you, I'll, I'll do my own look, thank you very much. He's actually playing at uh, Paris Fashion Week soon. And uh, this week, this coming week, I think, which uh, just he had to tell me was absolutely amazing. Um, Cece uh, was there as well. She's cool. Um, she's super unique. Cool. And Brendan Green told Cece to come and see you. She's, she's incredible. I'd, I'd, I'd love her to bits. Uh, Wolf of Guitar says, Ben, did you buy the £300,000 Les Paul? No, but I have played uh, both of those ones, actually. Um, they're, they're incredible guitars. That's with ATB guitars. Uh, I was quite tempted by a sort of fairly plain looking Telecaster they had on their stand and then uh, I realized it was like 70 grand. And, and then there was another one for 100 grand, but that had been sold. So uh, ATB has some seriously cool instruments uh, and black guard teddies, of course. Uh, SM Myers says, Ben, I've been checking for the 25 and a half inch fret scale ruler. Uh, but haven't found one in stock. Found them on eBay from Crimson Guitars uh, for 48 bucks with $100 shipping. Is this a third party buying up things? Uh, it should. No, Crimson Guitars UK is us. And if it's not on the website, well, it really should be. So uh, hold on. Oh, by the way, hey, hey, hi, people. I am absolutely flat out knackered. I am wiped out, I am destroyed, I am at risk of not making sense at all. Uh, SMIs, if you wouldn't mind emailing us, uh, I will uh, have a look for this uh, and we will get back to you unless I can find one now. Because uh, it might well be, come to think of it, the, how you're searching for this. Uh, i.e. you're looking for a 25 and a half inch scale fret ruler whereas yeah there we go so the fret spacing ruler with four scale lengths in one so it's a double-sided thing it's got a 25 and a half inch on one side 25 on the other 24.75 and 24.62 24.625 on the other uh, I suppose, yes, hold on, professional me, I'm also cold, it's cold in here today, uh, so essentially when you're searching on the website, if you are a little bit broader, I searched for fret ruler rather than 25 and a half inch, etc, 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 but here we go, I'm just going to share my screen quickly, uh, this is the, uh, this is the one, so, fret ruler. First one that comes up. Uh, the fret slot marking ruler, that is for, we've got two of them. Those are for use with the fret slotting mitre jig or, uh, or the, that sort of thing. But this is the one that uh, has what you are after. So 25 and a half inch for strats and tellies, etc. So there we go. Um, and yes, uh, they should be in stock at this point. All righty. Uh, the Ginger Drum Tech says, the guitar show was fantastic. It was great to meet you, Ben. I absolutely agree. Uh, putting faces to names and names to faces is, uh, is always great, especially because uh, uh, next year you're going to have to introduce yourself again and say, I'm Ginger Drum Tech. I'll remember your face, 100%. But uh, somehow correlating faces to actual names and people that seems to be my problem but anyway it's all fun uh, now remember this is a live stream where I'm going to answer your questions as the chat hots up the best way to guarantee an answer is via super chat and I very much appreciate that support as well uh, so uh, yeah ask me questions and see what we've got um, Paul needs says uh, <laughs> Uh, talking about Crimson Easters and meeting up at specific times. We should have sort of a beer evening at the next show or something. Well, not beer, a guitar evening. There we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. What can we say? Anonymous Botch was at the show as well. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people thought there wasn't going to be a live stream, but hey, 
uh, I was here working away and uh, I get my energy from you. So, it's cool. Okay, Brendan Green says, CC just uploaded her guitar show vlog. I'll watch that next. Don't tell anybody though, I'm pretending to work. Uh, yeah, uh, CC and I were filming uh, right at the end of the show after the, the, the buzzer had gone to kick out the members of the public. And uh, they, they were actively trying to kick her out while we were filming. It was, uh, yeah, it was a whole thing. But anyway, it's all good. Uh, Paul Cook says, Dave did a farewell vid on your gold oak guitar. He's playing on, on it as a must here. I did not realize that he'd done that. Um, he's, we really need to make him one. We really do. Uh, Creeve Rice says, I'm beginning to get the feeling that the museum is just an excuse to buy more guitars. You're a bit slow, Creeve Rice. I didn't realize that about you. Um, yeah, that's interesting. All joking aside, uh, how do I put this? My entire life at this point, if you see me doing something, it's because I absolutely want to do it. Uh, and my entire life appears to be designed around finding out how I can justify doing things I love. Uh, you know, I am genuinely, two years ago, I was not into guitar pedals. Uh, I, I, I th I'm not a particularly good player, never have been. Uh, but I thought that, uh, I thought that I should, as a player, um, get the sound I want out of the guitar, just with me and the guitar and an, and an amp. And actually, I've, I've realized recently that I need makeup and the pedals are my makeup, and I need lots of that makeup. And I'm loving pedals, and I'm like, okay, well, I need to now figure out how I can get even more pedals in the museum as part of that, and we're gonna start seeing pedals on the, on the channel as well, I'm sure. Um, or we're gonna write a book about them, or some, you know, there's, there's always ways to do it, and the museum is part of that. Uh, I genuinely wanted to see a guitar museum uh, in the UK that I could visit, and I'm, well, it's not happening. Let's start a guitar museum. So there we go. Uh, life Balance Dave, <laughs> which is perfect because that's kind of what, what I'm talking about. It's come through with the first super chat of the day. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, it says, a headstock I'm working on, I've managed to make the sides wonky in sanding. Any tips on squaring it up? It's a large strat style. If it bothers you, uh, it, it's, it's not absolutely necessary to have the sides or the edges of the, of the headstock to be perfectly square. So. Yeah, knowing that uh, is, is the first thing. I, I kind of like experimenting with things like that. However, if you grab a flat piece of, uh, a flat piece of wood, put your, uh, put your guitar down on it like that, maybe raised up a little bit on a bit of veneer or something like that, and then you put a leveling beam uh, flat down on its side next to it, you can use that as a make shift um, shooting board kind of a jig uh, that would uh, yeah help you flatten out those sides quite quite handily at least on this on the straighter uh, sides of the uh, on the large straight edge of the headstock I really can't talk I've spoken to thousands and thousands and thousands of people uh, this weekend and I'm now forgetting how to ha Kathy Thorne says, good afternoon all. Hi, Ben. What was the name of the lady photographer again? Sorry, I missed it. Uh, hold on. I've got her Instagram here. She's Eleanor Jane. And her Instagram is at Eleanor Jane Photo. And uh, genuinely, it's all about incredibly sexy photographs of incredibly sexy guitars. And uh, she does it so well uh, that you, well, Please check it out, seriously. Uh, mm -hmm. She's incredible. And she's just one of those genuinely nice people as well, which, uh, which always helps. Um, Eleven Magazine is the, is, the, uh, is the magazine. T Fetch says, is there a US retailer for crimson treatments and polishes? Not yet, although we are looking into 
possibilities. We are, <laughs> I'm, I'm making yet more changes at headquarters here with regards to who is uh, uh, working where and, 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 and things. And as, as we get bigger, people are having to focus down. So um, yeah, there's gonna be some changes with regards to the tools and tool department. It's gonna be great. Uh, and uh, speaking of uh, speaking of that, here's some coffee for me. Could you could you hear me flagging, Sam? Yeah, I could. Oh my God, I just. There you go. When I when I when I start talking shows, it's like this, and I'm on fire. I'm going. Well, I think that her name was Eleanor Jane. Maybe I should do more relaxed ASMR style uh, uh, live streams. Just after shows. There's a there's a there's a guy. Seriously, okay, if I'm in the sharing mood. I'll see if I can find it. There's a London, there's a guy who lives in London and uh, he just drives around. <sighs> I don't want to renew anything, come on. He drives around and uh, he's like ASMR driving in London. And he's like, well, look at this absolute idiot. He's creeping up on the lights and the lights, they're red. Oh no, he set off the guy next to him. He's creeping. And it's so, and I, I'm getting nothing out of it except for the entertainment and seeing this guy just critique the traffic in London. It's, it's hilarious. You should check it out. I'm going to try and find out what it is. Um, so, uh, yeah. Wow. What's that? History, history, history. Those are playlists. They've moved the history. Ah, there it is. Once upon a time, there was a luthier who completely forgot how to navigate YouTube. Nope, somebody else has been watching all sorts of weird stuff on my channel. Um, okay, anyway, ASMR, whatever. We'll find it. I'll find the link uh, if you want it, and we'll go from there. Uh, Hicks Custom Guitars says, just curious, when will GGBO 23 be announced? We are uh, having a meeting on Wednesday about sort of the final plannings. Uh, I... I, I uh, we are also finalizing the accounts uh, literally tomorrow to see just how financially unviable it is. Uh, and we will we will get back to you. Sporadic Amnesic has sent a £10 super chat. Thank you very, very much. Uh, it says, hi, Ben. I'm upgrading the Fairclough SG, and I'm thinking of swapping the bridge for one with roller saddles and getting a stop tail trim. Have you or anybody at Crimson HQ any experience with them? Yes, we have. We've used them quite a few times, actually, uh, predominantly in the school. But it's a very, very cool look. And in fact, it's a look that I want to explore personally. Uh, I saw a guitar at the show that uh, really got me thinking uh, I'd like to do that. So, uh, so yeah, they're, they're, they're very cool. They look cool. They seem to work very well. Uh, I would definitely say roller, uh, roller saddles is a, is a, a way forward. But, um, yeah, I don't have any tips other than to buy, buy quality. That's, uh, that is the way. Will Roberts has come in with a $10 super chat. Thank you very much, Will. And says, I'm fretting a 12-inch radius board. My frets are approximately 9.5 inch radius. Are they too bent? No. Uh, no, they're absolutely fine. Is there a trick to getting fret wire benders to widen the radius? Um, yes. And I can't for the life of me... I can't for the life of me remember how I have done that in the past, which is uh, somewhat embarrassing. So essentially, you're fairly, fairly tight. And you're going through. Um, I think what I've probably done in the past is just run it through backwards the other way. Uh, it's not something I've done uh, many times at all. Basically, uh, you do want your fret to be uh, quite a bit tighter than the radius of the fretboard. Uh, unless you were talking about really neatly solid stainless steel. Uh, essentially what happens is you, you'll knock either end of the fret in so that the tangs are underneath the wood and then push it in basically from the middle, thus compressing and conforming it to, your, to the radius of your fretboard. But what that's doing is it's pushing the tangs directly down 
in the wood and then sideways through the wood. So you've got your tang, which has got these little knobbly bits on it. Those knobbly bits are going sideways through the wood and they'll have fresh wood above them holding them in place, um, which makes the whole thing stronger and, uh, and more stable. So yeah, you don't need to flatten it uh, out at all, but um, yeah, there are ways, there are ways. Ricky is on holiday. Sam made this. Sam tends to uh, use the crimson coffee with with gay abandon. He he makes it so so strong. But that's what we need anyway. Okay, so Shane Doherty says uh, hi Ben. Curious when the live builds will be back. I really miss them. I'm not sure. I am not sure if I will do those or what. <sighs> They are so, so, so stressful. It's like a guitar show, but with the added complexity of trying to build a guitar as well. It's insane. Um, I, it's not to say I didn't enjoy them. It was just a hell of a lot uh, in one shot. So uh, that being said, nothing's off the table. I, I, I have got a few projects in mind that I would like to do quickly. And if I set aside a day a week and we stream that, Potentially, um, yeah, potentially something could happen. Uh, with the setup here at headquarters now, it, it could be pretty good. Okay, uh, Sporadic of Music replies, says, Cheers, Ben, been watching the vids of them, but was curious if you'd come across them and could vouch for them. I'll get some pics when it's done in the next couple of weeks, uh, getting locking tuners too. Uh, everything to make stability, and uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I hope that this uh, also ameliorates your... Uh, <sighs> excuse me, your neck break angle uh, issues. He says, uh, try not to yawn and causing 73 other people to yawn in the background. Um, Time and Guitar says, do you have any tips for working with stainless steel frets? Ever use them? I use them fairly regularly and no, there's, there's no major difference except they're a bit harder. Um, the most important thing to look out for is when you are, when you are using uh, flush trim uh, fret end cutters, you need to be very careful not to twist the cutters as you are closing them. If you twist a little bit, this is a very delicate edge because they are flush trim. If you twist, you are likely to shatter that, even on normal frets. On stainless steel or hypoallergenic frets, that is much more likely to happen. So avoid that where possible. Just keep it as, as clean a cut uh, as you can and you'll be okay. Other than that, just uh, it is just a case of a little bit more sanding. Now, we've got this gorgeous little sanding. This is the first prototype uh, with it's a sanding block specifically for frets and fret ends. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is a new tool on the Crimson Guitar site. And if you essentially hold the paper on over the edge, it makes the whole process of sanding the frets so much faster and more comfortable than fiddling around with a tiny little bit of paper and the paper wrapped around your finger and all that jazz. Um, I'm actually really annoyed with myself that it's taken this long to, uh, to come up with that. And of course, any one of you could make one in your workshop as well. It's a very, very, very simple thing. Paul needs says hypoallergenic frets with lots of question marks. Yes, Paul, um, a, a not insignificant number of people are actually allergic to, uh, to nickel and normal frets are made out of nickel silver. So companies make bronze uh, frets and bronze sounds like stainless steel in my opinion, much brighter, um, but it's um, a little bit easier to work with, a little bit. Uh, they do tend to be harder though than standard nickel silver as well, which is uh, which is a cool thing. Okay. Uh, Kirin Hurahan says, Hi Ben and folks, I'm in the middle of fixing up a Mick Thompson Ibanez signature. The paint on it is so thick. How would you go about touching up bad areas? I really don't want to strip the whole thing. 
uh, I don't blame you, although heat would, would help uh, a blowtorch and just pull it off in sheets. Um, yes, I should probably put my phone, oh no, hold on. Here we go, here we have a question uh, via the Discord. Uh, I'm going to assume that the finish, the aforementioned finish there is poly, so uh, super glue is a great finish repair. Uh, nail varnish is a great finish repair as well. But pretty much any, any varnish or lacquer will drop fill in. The real trick is matching the color, and that's, that's always a problem. Uh, and it's, it's, it never really seems to go according to plan, no matter what you do. Um, thank you very much, Krivarai, for forwarding on this question via the Crimson Guitars Discord. This is from An Angel Song Guitars. It says, any advice on multi-laminate neck through bass with maple or purple heart? I have four feet long, uh, three-quarter inch by uh, nearly three-inch boards, two maple, two purple heart, and two boards of wenge at two foot. Da, 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 lots of numbers there for a six-string V-bass. Uh, lots of things with a center... Ash body, center top, quilted maple. Um, okay. Uh, look, the, 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 the advice for people doing multi-laminate necks and multi-multi-laminate necks, such as is the case here, is to uh, clamp everything up, do a dry run first, clamp it all together, make sure everything's perfectly aligned without the slipperiness of the interstitial glue getting in the way. Make sure that it is solid and then drill through the wood from either side and have at least two locating pins of uh, wood or uh, you could, I suppose, use steel dowels covered in wax. Something that goes through uh, in wax or, um, or grease or something like that, potentially, maybe not grease. Wow, not grease, leave the grease alone. Uh, but you want some location pins in there so that it doesn't uh, move on you. Using the salt, a couple of grains of salt, is another way to stop slipping. But it, when you've got lots of different laminates and lots of glue, uh, it's an absolute nightmare. Locating pins, it won't move. Uh, drill through the veneers, drill through everything. So just make sure you've got a little bit of excess thing. That is the top tip, 100%, for multi-laminate neck preparations. Okay, Sporadic Cam Music with another super chat. Thanks, mate. Uh, as he's talking of blow torches, any more Shusugiban project or ideas coming up? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a Shusugiban uh, descendant that I worked on up on the ooh, Great Guitar Giveaway website right now. And uh, where are we? Well, look at that. <laughs> Top one. And uh, I actually took this guitar home thinking that I was going to uh, keep it in my personal collection because I'm I'm greedy and uh, and I love it but uh, my taste has changed and she's just a little bit too heavy for me so I want to build a very similar instrument but uh, using pine instead of the very heavy English ash and I want to see what that sounds like so actually yes uh, I'm gonna be building one of these copper rodded and all uh, maybe with a slightly different shape, but Shusuke band and uh, uh, and all of that. So that'll be coming up. And by the way, uh, not many tickets for this have sold. I mean, it's up there. <laughs> okay, it's got 50 days to go. I'm somewhat embarrassed about that, but uh, uh, for this show, we took a uh, we wanted to take a load of guitars for the Great Guitar Giveaway. And I ended up putting up a load more instruments on the site than we normally do. We normally have two or three weeks worth. Uh, this week, this time, we got about six week, six weeks worth of guitars on the uh, Great Guitar Giveaway website. Um, that being said, the show was incredibly impressive. We also had three workbenches with us, and uh, uh, basically, that we had people doing neck carving demos all day every day right up until the end of the show uh, i think the last hour there was a bit of a quiet patch and uh, it was incredible fun for everybody involved so uh, so yeah there we go
I did answer that question. I really did. Now, Paul Cook says, quite attractively priced too. Yes, uh, £2 a ticket essentially on that one. I'm, in my head, I thought that having £5 tickets and low ticket numbers, like 500 or 600 tickets uh, for the giveaway uh, prize draws was the way forward because it, it limits the amount of tickets uh, and it, it improves the odds essentially. But um, a lower ticket price and more tickets means that m most people are actually buying four or five tickets at the two pound price, uh, whereas uh, other people were buying just one at the five, which has the exact same odds, but means that there are there is the ability for people just to buy one single two pound ticket and win the guitar. So yeah, there we go. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. is talking about workbenches. Didn't you want to release a workbench building series on YouTube? I was thinking about it, but I don't have the time or energy. Uh, or the energy. Oh, wait. I've got no energy anymore. Uh, there's a lot. There's so much going on. I'm so excited. Uh, in the short term, there's going to be fewer videos as well. Oh, my God. You're so loud, Harvey. Dude, just live streaming, talking to people, and you just, um, you didn't even hear him, did you? Oh, there he slammed the door. Um, Harvey, we've got, we've got a door, um, a swinging door just over there, and uh, it used to be really loud, so people, when they walk through, still sort of remember that it used to be loud and try and stop it from, from slamming, uh, but we've put rubber on there, and it's fine. Um, but anyway. Uh, Camel people, I need questions uh, because, well, I'm flagging already, so give me questions or give me sleep. Sleep it is. Uh, we've heard that Jaskar Evo Gold fret wire is not being made anymore. Any thought? That's from Richard Garnish. Um, I, I don't know about that. Hmm. Okay, that's better. I'm not slurping coffee in your ears, and I've just drunk the whole cup, so ooh, maybe I'll wake up a bit. <sighs> Sparatic M Music says, that's bloody nice. Uh, talking about the, uh, the Shusuki Ban uh, Descendant guitar that's available on the giveaway site at the moment. Yes, that's cool. Uh, no bench build coming just yet. Uh, Life Balance Dave says, having spent some time with Ben yesterday, I can completely understand the gap between what Ben wants to do and is able to get done. I'm tr I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to design this studio and this space and this company around actually getting more content up and facilitating that. Uh, I'm going to have an administrator actually in the room soon working on uh, working on scheduling of um, content and helping to organise the other people around me so that we can get more filming done and create things. But uh, yeah, I'm. What's the word? Shattered. I am absolutely knackered at this point. But it's cool. It's fine. I choose to do this. So, ha, it's my fault. Lisa says, uh, what's the difference between the Stumac Safe Slot Nut Guard Hosco Groove Bar and the Crimson Groove Bar Nut Slot Assist Tool and which is best and how to use them? I don't think there's any difference uh, whatsoever, although I haven't actually looked at the Safe Slot Nut Guard from Stumac. I assume that it's twice the price and made out of shit material though. Um, wow. I'm not as nice when I'm tired. Huh. Okay. Thoughts on using a diamond stone chisel sharpening stone for fret leveling, particularly stainless steel frets. Um, as long as it is actually flat, go for it. If it isn't flat flat, then yeah, it's it's not a good idea. But if you've got it and it's perfect, it's perfectly flat, and you can check that, then yeah, it, it's it's fine. Uh, the problem, thinking about it with 
that though is that using diamond plates you tend to want to use a lubricant of some sort and you don't want to get uh, particularly wet lubricants on your fretboard etc so maybe not huh i wonder uh, rick nelson rick how are you uh, says, how should I go about marking out shapes or pinstripes or faux binding without marking up my new paint job? Should I use pencil or chalk or a marking gauge? Hmm. Can you hear the drilling going on in the background? We're putting... Uh, uh <laughs> yeah, there's, there's stuff going on. It's going to be better organized at the end. Chaos today, though. It's over a new paint job. I think that a whiteboard marker might well do it for you. Um, but it's not a problem I've ever had. For some reason, I suppose I would normally do faux binding before the finish goes on. And uh, I've never played personally with pinstripes. So, yeah, I'm not actually surprised. Yeah, I think a, chalk, a whiteboard marker would do nicely. <laughs> Paul Neen says, you should get some sleep, mate. <laughs> Few of us expected this stream. Uh, it's one of those things. Um, I, I really do enjoy this. Uh, Paul Cook uh, says, one of the proprietors at the show mentioned they're launching a new range of vintage-inspired guitars in Nitro in the next few months. Any more secrets to share? Well, I think that guy was a bit daft, to be honest. Also, you know, he's, he's got fresh head tattoos, which have damaged... Uh, brain pan. <laughs> Time and guitars. Would you use a gouge for scalloping high frets? I used to think that I would, but actually no. Uh, the problem is as you're pushing your... Oh, did you guys notice the caffeine kick in and me wake up? This is me normally. Ha ha! Hi. Um, the <laughs> Hot damn. The, the problem is, I don't have a single sharp gouge here. The problem is, as you're pushing your gouge through, if you go all the way over the fretboard and push out the other end, you're going to rip a whole section of wood out. So you need to push from the edge to the middle and, and vice versa, which is a little bit awkward because you're changing the thing and you're moving the etc. You don't want to do that. I have used gouges to rough it out in the past, but in reality, a small half round rasp followed by a small half round or round file is all that you need. And these things are, are commonly available. Uh, an abrasive tool for the first time ever is actually the best tool for the job. Can't believe it. Okay, Lisa says, I have an acoustic guitar and someone has replaced the tunematic bridge with a static one, but they've plugged through the top and down about three centimeters further. The bridge now needs to be moved back a touch. Ha! Advice? Uh, find that person and beat them with the guitar, potentially. Uh, see, tired, not nice. Tired Ben is not nice Ben. Okay. They've plugged through the top and down. <sighs> okay, fine. It's a tunematic bridge. Uh, tunematic bridges have got two holes in them where the posts go. You can, instead of having a circular hole, you can take a round file and elongate that hole thus keeping the uh, the posts where it is but pushing the bridge back a little bit essentially turning it into a keyhole rather than a, or a, or an oval instead of a circle uh, if you really want to have fun and i have actually done this in the past you drill a small hole from the side tap it with a an m3 tap and put a tiny little grub screw in there to lock it in place and that gives you more adjustment uh, if it's just a touch, you don't want to be going around uh, re-plugging, re-drilling, etc., messing around. Uh, I would, that is exactly what I would do. I would uh, file those holes, make it, dun -dun. you heard me the first time. There we go. 
Okay. The Ginger Drum Deck. Hi, Ben. I'm chuffed with my purchases. I've got a fret rocker and leveling beam plus drop. What grit sandpaper should I use on the beam? Uh, thank you very much for your support and, and, and all of that. Um, and it was great to talk to you at the show as well. <sighs> leveling beam. I generally use about 320 grit, uh, but I also tend to use it a little bit on something else before I do fretwork. So about 400 is probably right for fretwork, in my opinion. It's the uh, it's the perfect split between speed and uh, minimizing the sanding that comes afterwards. Phil Queener has come in with a ten pound super chat. Uh, says planning GGBO twenty three. I bought a wrecked Harmony arch top, stripping to bare wood, replacing fretboard, adding a truss rod, and completely covering in new material. Would this be considered a kit build? Yes, it would be a kit build. Uh, essentially. Any any instrument that already has a neck would be considered, uh, a, yeah, any instrument that has a neck already, even if you're going to then go and do work on that neck, uh, means it's a kit build, uh, really. But yeah, this is a grey area. This, this particular one is sounds very cool, and it's very grey area. Uh, okay, uh, Mark Jennings, he's been a member for 11 months on the channel. Uh, he says, Mr. Ben, sir, the beard is looking magnificent. Why, thank you, Mark. It's quite funny, because I, I can't find the joke in the, in the thing, because the beard is looking magnificent, and Mark generally is taking the piss out of me. Looks all right. I'm happy. And confident. Yeah, I'm happy. I had a, <laughs> yeah, anyway, okay, cool. Uh, T Fetch says, can ya raffle off, we're not allowed to use the word raffle, it's a prize draw, uh, a custom crimson build voucher for the winner to get a guitar to their own specs, electronics, shape, color, and all, since it's a dream guitar and whatnot. I'm not sure what that noise is, by the way. And it's gone. Fantastic. Uh, yes, we are going to uh, we are going to limit it to a certain extent. We're going to do exactly that, but we're going to say, okay, look, here is a pile of materials and hardware within this pile of materials and hardware, or its equivalent uh, in value. We will uh, sell tickets, and people can then have us build that guitar on camera for them. So yes, it's something that we are planning at this point. Uh, there we go. Making music online, another beard compliment. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I'm now embarrassed. Uh, hi, Ben. Can you explain why on the three-quarter SG did Sophia not use a notch straight edge but rather a straight edge across the top of the frets? Is that another way of doing it? Thanks for inspiration. Uh, she didn't have uh, a notch straight edge that fit in between the frets on that particular scale length. Um, it, it's... Uh, yeah, basically the notch straight edge is, is designed for normal scale lengths and that just is not normal. Um, you can guesstimate it a little bit. <laughs> you can guesstimate it a little bit by putting it on top of the frets and then visually seeing the size of the gap between the, the fretboard and the, the bottom of this normal straight edge. And that's how I did it uh, early on before I made notch straight edges. Uh, it's just not as precise. Mark Jennings has just sent me a message saying, I only take the piss when it's justified. Hence doing it a lot. You beautiful human. Uh, okay. Talitha's asked me to accept the collaboration request on something on Instagram. If I like it, let's have a look and see if I like it. Um, yeah. Doom, do doom, do doom, do doom. Go coffee. That's a... Uh, Aid the producer. You sound fun. Richard Garnish. Iwasaki razor file. It was almost made for the job. This is a very, very good point. There are small Iwasaki razor files. Uh, they're relatively narrow. I don't have a round one. Nope, I don't have them here. But they are almost perfect for the job. Funnily enough, I think it was Mark Jennings, while on a course here many years ago, that introduced me to Iwasaki. And uh, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. We've uh, made quite a lot of money <laughs> selling them over the years since you introduced them to me because they are that good. Uh, no, that doesn't mean you get a free course. 
or a packet of crisps or a kiss or anything, really. Just, just, yeah, just my appreciation. Thank you very much. Uh, Rick Nelson, I've heard you say to use a stud finding uh, to search out nails, screws, nuts in repurposed wood. Did you mean metal detector? Or do stud finders work too? Is that very reliable? A metal detector kind of tool. Um, there are, yes, basically, metal detecting is the issue. Uh, <laughs> Martini says, ah, Iwasaki, you're welcome. Um, I like it. Adam Dutton, I'm in the market for a more luxurious beard. What is your beauty secret? Was it poisoning yourself with numbing, with skin numbing cream? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, the secret is to wash regularly. That's about it at, the, at this point. Or to stress yourself out by doing too much. Uh, I, for the longest time, in all seriousness, uh, sort of just rolled out of bed and existed and hardly ever looked in a mirror. I actually now carry a comb because it turns out that, um, yeah, thousands and thousands and thousands of people watch what I do on a daily basis and I should probably brush my freaking hair, don't you think? So yeah, that's a secret, a comb. I'm embarrassed to actually say that. <laughs> <sighs> Vax Hedrum, follow-up question. Just watched the three-quarter SG video. Sophia sands the frets by holding the leveling beam on the ends. Seems like this is a really great idea. Can you comment on doing it that way? If your guitar is solid, then yes, it's a good way of absolutely guaranteeing that you're not going to put too much pressure on the guitar because you, you just sit in there very gently holding the beam with not a great amount of pressure. I tend to hold the guitar underneath the neck so I can feel if it's moving or flexing as I go. But it's a, it's achieving the same result. And uh, yeah, that's the way. Crimson beard cones from combs from Mr. Waffles. Uh, it could be fun to make beard combs out of uh, offcuts from guitars. Yeah, why not? Beautiful wooden pedal board, please, Ben, from IFX. I genuinely have got some ideas for, uh, I genuinely have got some very, very cool ideas for some uh, uh, pedal boards. Uh, Gabor says, uh, hey, Ben, uh, good to see you. Thank you very much. Uh, you need a sandalwood beard comb, Ben. Life balance, Dave. Um, <laughs> yeah, I use guitar finishing oil. Uh, that would, ooh, that would be bad. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, the beard is getting a little bit chunkier. I, I, yeah. Uh, in opposition to what my mother wants me to look like, I think I fancy a big beard at the moment. So there we go. Uh, Gabor's asking about 3D plans for guitars. We have considered that, but um, frankly, don't have the time to draw them, actually. That's all it comes down to. Um, Making Music Online says, ooh, pedal board and beard combs with guitar headstocks of the rich and famous. <laughs> Crimson beard oils, this is from Osh. Uh, great for guitars and beards alike. It would have to be a non-drying oil. So in reality, yeah, there we go. Uh, Crimson Fretboard Restorative. That's the stuff. That is the stuff. Oh God, I dripped it everywhere. It's not quite the right... Um, ...thing, but... Yeah. There we go, that'll do. Lemon scented for uh, for the guitarist's pleasure. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen just in the background there. Yeah. We're all right? I have often said that there is a reason why uh, 
we've developed the Crimson Fretboard Restorative, and uh, uh, standard traditional lemon oils on guitars are often predominantly made out of uh, petroleum byproducts and they're nasty things. Uh, the main active ingredient in this is actually basically a massage oil, which is basically a beard oil. So there we go. <laughs> Sporadic amnesic. He's actually going to do it, lol. Do it, do it, Shane. Life Banners Dave says, for fuck's sake, I have a big beard and a bottle of that sat next to me. Do it, Dave. Go on then. Vax Headroom, this is why you watch live, people. Uh, in the next video, Ben's head is two times normal size again, lol. <laughs> You're a bad influence, crow. <laughs> it's my balance, Dave, again. Uh, fantastic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but genuinely, other than the, other than the uh, lemon scent in there, it's, it's good stuff. You could massage yourself with it, so there's no reason, uh, there's no reason not to. Uh, okay, oh, here we go. So, uh, Creever Eyes just sent me a, a, an image of the aforementioned Stumac product. It is just the safe slot nut guard. Of yes, it does make, the, make it impossible to cut too deep uh, because if you cut just like the uh, the other products if you cut too far you're going to cut into metal and thus blunt your saw but it's just so horrendously overcomplicated and actually not necessary use a half pencil draw a line um, where you need to cut down to and cut down to that line it's not difficult you don't need to spend whatever hundreds of pounds on a, on a, on a damn tool um, in order to uh, yeah, not cut too deep. <sighs> there we go. Chevet Lien says, I'm having flashbacks of a movie where a kid puts peanut butter on his head to grow hair. Uh, Life Balance Day says, it's, it's possibly actually cheaper than the beard oil I use and far more versatile clearly. Uh, well, actually, I suppose the beard oil you use could potentially be good for fretboards. Who knows? Um, yeah, I do. I do wonder how long um, this will remain. It's still a little bit damp. It's not. Yeah, I think I think it's fine. I'm, I'm not. Um, this is an experiment live. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, Rick Nelson, are there very many short scale guitars with tremolos or am I too sheltered as a guitarist? They don't seem to be. Is there any particular reason why or why not? Um, I have never considered this. I think potentially short scale means a bit of a weird tension thing, so it might not. I don't think the tr I don't think, and this is pure conjecture on my part. I don't think the tremolo would feel quite the same with the, with the tension of the short scale, but uh, no, uh, I don't think there's any major reason. We do have on the giveaway site at the moment a um, uh, let's have a uh, let's have a quick look. We've got very good odds on <laughs> this little SG that I cut the other day. It's only sold six tickets, which I can't believe. Um, but, oh no, that little uh, Ibanez does not have a trim. I thought that had a trim because it's Ibanez shaped. Well, there we go. But same thing, very few tickets sold for both of these two mini guitars, and they've had a full professional setup. So, uh, yes, please don't, um, uh, don't let the time that Josh spent on those be wasted. Um, anyway, all right, Funky R has come in with a five euro super chat, thanks very much, and says, uh, hi Ben, is there a benefit to installing a truss rod under the fretboard or from the back under a stripe? Thanks. Uh, no. Let's see, I've got the, I've got the, put the comb away, Ben. <sighs> the, 
The benefit of putting it in from the back and then using a, a walnut stripe, etc., is that you can make a neck out of a single piece of wood. If you are, uh, so that's the prime benefit and the reason why necks were designed that way by Leo Fender. If you are already gluing on a separate fretboard, then no, the best way is to uh, have the truss rod installed from the front underneath the fretboard, and there's no evidence of it. Unless, and here's the second benefit, you like the look of a walnut stripe, in which case, hey, yo, hashtag UBU, and, uh, and go for it. Uh, now, the benefit of doing it from underneath the fretboard is that you can use a traditional standard dual action truss rod, which tends to, at the nut end where your Allen key goes in, be fatter than the rest of the rod i.e. if you were installing it from behind, you'd have to have a much wider slot uh, in order to have it a, a dual action, normal dual action truss rod at least. Uh, there, are, there are various different uh, versions available that are actually narrower, um, but it's a bit more difficult to find. So there we go. There we go, Time and Guitar says Brian May's guitar is short scale with a tremolo. I thought we were talking about short, short, short uh, ones. But uh, anyway, uh, Rob Tootle and next week's live stream will be hosted by ZZ Top. Bring it on. Um, maybe people think the SG is left handed. It ain't left handed. Uh, T Fetch says the Candy Apple Red 60s Strat question answers seem very wrong. Does it? Ooh, did -oh, it's a very cool, very cool guitar. Let's have a look. There we go. Bump. When was the first electric guitar invented? Nope, that is absolutely correct. One of those is uh, is right. Mm -hmm. Don't. Oh no, I killed the stream. Whoops, hold on. I'm not entirely sure if I'm still live streaming or not because uh, I've just closed the, <laughs> uh, the thing. I suspect I am because I didn't click end. Hold on, you daft, daft man. Uh, there we go. No. Live. Oh, come on. Still live. Hi. We're good. I know what I'm doing. Honest. I'm, I'm not a fool. I'm not sleep deprived. Oh, no, wait. I am both of those things. Uh, here we go. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. That's Creeper. I was saying you did not kill the stream. You just shut the window. Fantastic. All right, people. Look, we, we're here. Give me questions uh, or give me sleep. Billy Gibbons is touring some places in the UK this year, FYI. Woo -hoo. Uh, actually, I would genuinely like to meet him. Uh, I'm going to uh, look into that. Defetch says Wikipedia says 32. Really? Uh, I, will, I will look into that too as well. Uh, Fred Hall has gone to the brain. That's from you. Oh, sh. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Uh, really good meeting you and the team on Saturday. Your advice and time was really appreciated. Uh, it's from Kevin Cox. It, it's, it's a pleasure. I love doing things like that, uh, genuinely. Uh, Chasing Dragons. Do graphite reinforcement rods really help, or do they actually fight the truss rod? Um, they really help. The truss rod is stronger than the graphite. Uh, and I what you want... My current favorite guitar is a... Um, it's Fender Custom Shop 51 no caster Telecaster thing with a humongous neck. And it is so stable and so responsive as a result of that. Uh, and carbon fiber stiffening rods give the same thing. So, so yes, there we go. Uh, I do think that they are absolutely worth it. And they do fight the truss rod to a certain extent, but the truss rod is stronger and will uh, overcome. The Side Effects Band says, any chance you'll ever come to the States, maybe the NAMM show in California? I am absolutely going to be going to the NAMM show at some point, uh, for sure. Uh, I, 
I have got I've got some ADHD meds actually just arrived, and I'm going to start taking them tomorrow, which is going to be fun, which means I'm probably potentially maybe going to stop procrastinating. I'm just going to sort my damn passport out because uh, that lapsed a while ago, and I just haven't got around to doing it because I am an arch procrastinator. Yeah, it's almost at a professional level with me. So there we go. Now, Control shift t restores tabs. I don't have the brain for that. I know control c control v and that's about it. But uh thank you for the uh, for the tip. Um okay. Come on people. Give me questions. Hello. 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 Hi. Okay. Let me talk then. What have we got? Uh for those who have joined us um, please go and check or check out Eleanor Jane. Uh, what is her website actually? Eleanor Jane Photography Bursts and Gold Tops Calendar, and her new magazine Eleven is the finest guitar-based magazine I have ever experienced in my life. It is incredible, and uh, Eleven Magazine, I suppose, is the website. Uh, also, while you're about it, Bonhams have got a fairly cool Peter Green auction coming up soon. We might have some. Uh, we might have something for you there at some point. Um, I'm sorry. I'm too happy with my life. Uh, what is the website for this magazine? Do, do, do. Yeah, at Eleven Guitar Mag is the Instagram. ElevenGuitarMag.com is the website. So seriously, go check that out. I am a huge fan uh, of Eleanor's work. Uh, S.M. Meyer says, you've got your meds. That's great news, Ben. You've been waiting so... And then he does not finish the sentence. So I'm going to have to wait for the end of that, too. I have. It's been ages. It's been basically a year. And they arrived on Friday after we left for the show, <laughs> which was typical. Uh, Vulcan Essence coming with a five-year super chat. Says, hi, Ben. Under which circumstances would one use white stain? Cheers, V. Um, we don't actually do the white stain anymore because... Uh, it had so much pigment in it, it was essentially paint, and uh, that was a problem. But uh, I've used it in the past to do some pretty cool, very opaque finishes. You can mix it in to uh, into other stains to get different effects, essentially, and it does work as a good base from which to create custom, custom colors. But uh, yeah, the world is your oyster, as it were, so... Yeah. RJ Hoopo says, I think the frying pan guitar was 31 or 32. I genuinely actually think that I, that you're right. I've, we've messed up. I, I've messed up. I've messed up. I used the wrong reference for that uh, candy apple red question. Hold on for a second. Josh, have a good evening. Enjoy your new guitar, you reprobate. <laughs> Thanks, ben. And congratulations. Thank you. And no, he didn't buy a crimson. <laughs> uh, Life Balance Dave says, Ben dropped you a message, I read the sensor I showed you, uh, will partner well with the meds, good luck. Uh, dude, I will check that out, thank you very, very much. Uh, Blast Hard Cheese, I'm going to be building my first from scratch guitar very soon. Any tips for those of us who have to resort to buying wood online? Uh, maybe what we should look for in reviews or anything like that. Uh, you know what type of wood you want, of course. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's all about reputable suppliers. Uh, th that's it. It's just like buying anything else. You, you, you have to make sure that the wood is dry. And w if you have the ability to test that, uh, I use uh, my... I don't have it here. My moisture meter is absolutely incredible. Um, if you don't have a moisture meter, then um, it's a bit more problematic. You can sort of sense how wet it is. How are you, Sam? Okay. Can I ask for your hand, please? Uh, I'm locking somebody in, aren't I? <laughs> there you go. And Harvey was too scared to come in. <laughs> Harvey was too scared to interrupt. Yeah, We've only got 100 people watching. You know, it's I'm not sure I'd trust Harvey to drive my van. He's too 
happy. Yeah. He's, 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 he just looks like, yeah. Anyway, uh, this should be interesting. It's the first time I've let Sam drive my van too. The first time I let Tom drive one of my vehicles, he reversed it straight into a metal post that was uh, in the ground in uh, what was, it's now our workshop, but it was an open barn back there. And there was this metal post with a, uh, a flat plate on the top and he just reversed right into it. He was mortified. And I was just like, well, you're going to have to paint it, aren't you? He's like, yes, but I am. Um, anyway, where am I? Okay, Sporadic Amnesic has come in with a £10 super chat, which I very much appreciate, and said, I watched the vid of the 2018 guitar show at Kempton and spotted a brand called Wanna Dem, which had guitar necks that were scalloped on the sides, but <laughs> yeah, on the sides between the frets. Wouldn't that make playing awkward? Awkward as all hell. So they had guitars that essentially look like... They were scalloped like that in between the frets. Absolute insanity. Uh, they were also made out of basically uh, cast aluminium, I seem to recall, and were heavy as all hell and cold and uncomfortable in every other way. I don't normally slag off other people, but they were building art in the shape of a guitar. It wasn't... Uh, they were barely functional, essentially, as musical instruments. Uh, they were there to shock, which is, which is fine. Uh, go to eleven. Hi Ben. Great to meet up with Tom and Sam and meet Josh. The guitar show. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> On Saturday, you were able each time I swung by. Ha ha. I was all over the place. I did more business. Uh, I spoke to so many people and did so many deals with so many cool brands and. Uh, uh, there's so much fun stuff happening, trust me. Uh, was there an issue with the coupons from the UK GS mailing list sign up? The, uh, so yes, you will be getting another email imminently, check your junk. Uh, so essentially they had messed up a little bit I think on their automatic email which didn't have the coupon but um, you will get that coupon. Tom was talking to him just before I went live. So it should be sorted now. Um, so, yes, that's, I suppose, a good point. If you go to, uh, if you are signed up to the Great Guitar Giveaway mailing list, or if you go to the mailing list for the, uh, uh, for the guitar show, then uh, you'll get a coupon uh, for £1.99 uh, sent to you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm not the last person here, am I? I will see you in, in a few minutes. <laughs> I sincerely hope not. <laughs> okay, uh, in that case, I'm going to have to actually call it a night, people, because uh, uh, I haven't locked down this workshop forever. Carol Woods just sent out a four pound su uh, super chat with just a, somebody giving me a mug of coffee or juice or something. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Rob Tootle says, I've got to go. It's my daughter's 20th birthday today. Ta-ta for now. Uh, Rick Nelson, any suggested remedies for changing the color of a brass nut? I typically think gold hardware looks cheesy, and I'm a petty bastard, but I can hear the difference in my open E power chord, Black Tusk. Uh, yes, go to a gun stock shop and buy some, or just online, buy some blacking solution for brass, and it'll turn it black. Uh, it might scratch off over time, but you'll have enough blacking solution to do a lot. Uh, Matt Lang says, are there any reputable wood dealers in Bristol? Most seem to be building trade. I don't know. Uh, I think for general wood stuff, you need to travel quite a bit. But uh, anyway, okay, people, I'm going. I'm done. I'm dusted. You are fantastic. Thank you very much for your support. Have a, have a great week. I will be back on Wednesday with another live stream drawing, uh, drawing the giveaway prizes for, well, there's a bunch finishing, actually. Uh, yeah, a hell of a bunch finishing. Where are we? Ending soon. I think there's, uh, there's a Gibson Les Paul, the Jackson Dinky Hot Rod, Green S.E. Mayer, the D'Angelico, and the Eastman. This is a stunning guitar, Gold Burst. Just whew, look at that. Could be yours. Anyway, thank you for everything.
I love you guys. And uh, yeah, good night. Good night.